and welcome to the third hour of American Agenda. I'm Heather Childers. Bob Sellers is off today. Thank you so much for sticking around or thank you for just joining us if you are. We're now joined though by our family of guest co-host, host of Stacy on the Right and co-chair of Project 21. There she is, Stacy Washington, an author on uh, Bold TV, David Grosso, and director for the American Center for Political Leadership and former Florida Congressman Dennis Ross, welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to start with this topic because everybody's talking about it today. President Biden's rather empty town hall last night. We're talking about the physical room right now. Um, hitting on a number of issues, including what he believes the CDC is going to mandate when it comes to COVID precautions. Listen to this. The CDC is going to say that what we should do is everyone over the age of, under the age of 12 should probably be wearing a mask in school. That's probably what's going to happen. Secondly, those over the age of 12 who are able to get vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you shouldn't wear a mask. If you aren't vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask. So it's going to get a little bit tight in terms of, well, our mom or dad being honest that, you know, Johnny did or did not get vaccinated. That's going to raise questions. Well, his comments come after the American Association of Pediatricians recommended everyone over the age of two wear masks when returning to school and also comes as a number of local officials, as we've discussed, have already started backpedaling on mask guidance amid this new virus outbreak. But some others are worried about his mental state. Here's why. We should be in a position where you uh, um, are, why can't the, the, the experts say, we know that this virus is in fact, uh, um, uh, it, it, it's going to be, uh, or excuse me. All right, so Stacy, we'll start with you. Uh, a couple things to get through here. First, they wonder why people are confused about you know, wearing masks or getting a vaccine, but then you listen to something like that and that might explain it because I still don't even know what his advice was there. But then the other issue, of course, whether or not there's something going on with the physical health of the president of the United States. Well, Heather, so I'll take the second one first. Obviously, there is something going on with his mental health. He's suffering from dementia and we need uh, we need responsible people to assist us with you know, dealing with this. This is something that we knew about before he was ever installed as the president of the United States. And so that, that's a problem. But the other thing about the masks, uh, the CDC can issue guidance, but they can't actually make law. Mm -hmm. So all of the issues about whether or not small children, you know, three and four-year-olds should be wearing masks, that's a local issue. And so I, what, I'm, I, what I'm exhausted by is this insistence that somehow the CDC knows better than teachers and pediatricians and parents and those on the ground, the actual caregivers and caretakers of these children. Uh, should they be wearing masks? What is the, the case load in their state? How many people are getting infected? How many people are being hospitalized? How many people are dying? How many children are in those numbers? That's what should be the deciding factor on whether or not children are wearing masks in school, not the CDC and certainly not President Biden. Yeah, I don't know how it, it began that, that we were listening to, to the CDC and they were telling us what to do. No one elected the CDC mm -hmm. to do that. Um, David, your opinion, take either issue on this. I think this has been one of the most confusing eras in public messaging, and it's really hard to have a clear takeaway from anything the president just said and what several local authorities are saying as well. And we're seeing dissent at the highest levels, right? Even take Los Angeles County, for example, which is the most populous county in the United States. The uh, local authorities want to reimpose the mask mandate, but the local sheriff is unwilling to enforce it. So talk about confusing, right? As far as Joe Biden, Joe Biden's old, right? He's older, and there are a lot of people who do fine at that age, but Joe Biden seems to have his certain struggles with aging. I mean, aging is really difficult. Additionally, we also know that Joe Biden's always had a speech impediment, so public speaking has always been a challenge for him. Of course, things as you get older, as we can all attest to, become more challenging for all of us. Yes, and, and that is true about the speech impediment, but uh, Dennis, it does seem to be a, a little bit more than that when it comes to just yeah. losing the train of thought, trying to explain something. And he's the president of the United States. He has to go and deal with foreign leaders. How is he able to do that when, when we watch incidents like what we just saw last night? It is very difficult. Heather, I watched it last night, and it was absolutely painful. 
uh, to see the President of the United States stumble over his thoughts, uh, and not so much his words, but his thoughts, yeah. and not be able to complete a coherent thought. Uh, the fact that there were few people there is evidence, I think, of, of the interest that people are taking in this president. Uh, it's very disconcerting. And when we talk about the pandemic, we talk about the politics of the pandemic. And where it's leading us today has me very concerned because it seems to be leading us to a mask militia. Those that will be deputized to enforce, to make sure that everybody's wearing their mask that should be wearing their mask. I agree with Stacy. You know, let's look at the, uh, the statistics. The people that have been vaccinated, you know, they're not going to the hospitals for treatment. Yes, they may contract the, 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 the disease, but they're, they're doing well. You know, we've got a great handle on this now. We still have a long way to go. But the CDC, for whatever reason, has been given authority uh, that, that they don't have. And they're yeah. not the ones to set precedent. Neither is the American Pediatric Association. Uh, you know, a lot of this, ha we have regulations for a reason that have to be balanced for cost-benefit purposes. That hasn't been done with this pandemic. That's why we had a terrible economic downturn. Yeah. But we're getting out of it and getting better. You know, uh, Dennis, since you brought it up, you said uh, you can get the vac you get the vaccine, but you can still get COVID. That's the opposite of what President Biden said last night um, when he was talking mm -hmm. about vaccines, um, which we know is misinformation, according to Jen Psaki and others. Here's what else he said about vaccines. The CDC is going to say that what we should do is everyone over the age of under the age of 12 should probably be wearing a mask in school. That's probably what's going to happen. Secondly, those over the age of 12 who are able to get vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you shouldn't wear a mask. If you aren't vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask. So it's going to get a little bit tight in terms of, well, a mom or dad being honest that, you know, Johnny did or did not get vaccinated. That's going to raise questions. Okay, that, that's the, I think, the same uh, sound that we aired earlier. But in, in reference to vaccines, as I said, he did make the comment, Stacy, that if you get the vaccine, you can't get COVID. But we know that to not be true. Right. So, Heather, this is what's so fascinating. While he's making these statements mm -hmm. online yesterday, uh, earlier in the day, in the evening, there were all these stories out of the UK about the percentage of people who are in the hospital and who some of whom are dying of COVID-19 who are double vaccinated, meaning they've had both, both right. doses of them. Right. So that, that's happening in the U.S. as well. We're not talking about huge numbers. In, in some of the cases I saw, it's like 88 people. I think it was in Michigan or Wisconsin. They passed away in the hospital. They had comorbidities, but they also had the vaccine, and they died of COVID-19. So this can happen. Not only can you transmit the virus, you can also die from the virus if you have COVID-19 or if you have COVID-19 and if you've been vaccinated. So there is no magic bullet here. There is no just get the vaccine and you won't die. That's like saying just wear a seatbelt and you won't die in any car crash. Wearing the seatbelt is the smart thing to do, but you can still die in a car crash. So we have to be smarter than this. Yeah, and, and beyond that, I mean, since we're con constantly hearing from this administration how important the messaging is and members of the media being called on the carpet for not having the appropriate message as deemed by this White House, you would think that the White House would be able to get the correct messaging out there. Yeah, I agree 100%. And mm -hmm. I just want to say, you know, for those who decide to get the vaccine, God bless. I, I think it's a personal choice. And I have been advocating very stridently on my program and everywhere that I get to, a chance to speak, like here. Always so grateful to get to come on Newsmax with you, Heather. I just want people to make a decision based on what their doctor says and what they personally feel is the right choice yeah. for them based yeah. on their medical history and the um, information available. Let's not punish each other for making different choices. All right, well, stand by, panel. Um, David and Dennis, I'll start with you next. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk about this one that's got everybody fired up as well, the January 6th commission fallout. Senate Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy's head-turning decision in response to Speaker Pelosi's power move. Up next.